And like I said, I have my MBA. Yeah. But I've learned so much more outside of that. Come on, man. But I think it's one of those things. It goes back to our relationship with money. Yeah, yeah. And having that knowledge. And I think self-education is important. Yeah. Educate yourself first. Yeah. You know, formal education is cool, but you learn more, you, you make more by mm. learning on yourself and through so-called mistakes. Yo, what's going on, fam? It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. Welcome back to the table. Uh, whether you listen to us on podcast, YouTube, or watching us on IG Stories um, or IG TV, man, I'm so excited. Today, I'm joined by uh, Freddie, Christina, and Brian, uh, the Pastor Brian Bullock. You all know him. And Christina, who kills it around the college space. And Freddie who's really out there fighting uh, for minorities and really helping them really go after debt freedom and stack this cash. So I'm really excited. I don't need to sit here and read their bios. I want to dive straight in to this subject today because we got brothers and ladies <laughs> up at the table. And um, I'm, I'm super excited because today I really want to talk about how do we, um, as a generation— a younger generation, how do we really build a true legacy, build true wealth? What's hindering us from building that? Mm -hmm. And how do we go about it? And so all of us at the table are working on that right now. All of us at this table have accomplished some amazing things. Mm -hmm. So real quickly for the people listening in right now, we'll start with ladies first. Give them about a quick 30 seconds on like who, who you are and what's your main platform, what's your main message? I'm Christina Ellis, and yes. I grew up in a low-income household. My mom was a fighter. She's from Venezuela, and she basically told me I was on my own for college, had to figure out a way to pay for it. Wow. And it was challenging, but it also inspired me. I got super pumped about the scholarship process, went over a half a million dollars, Ooh, and— hey. Oh, thank God. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 and was able to go to my dream school and graduate completely debt-free. So now my platform, what I am passionate about, is helping students do the same thing. That's awesome. A minority who uh, came from a low-income home went to her dream school. I know your dream school, but tell the people. What Vanderbilt was University. Vandy. And Vandy ain't cheap. <laughs> no. And you graduated with no debt. Thank God. So come, on wow. now, come on now. Wow. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. No excuses. We're going to talk about it, but no excuses, y'all. If she can do it, so can you. Freddie, holler at me. All right. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland? Um, oh, yeah. Go Browns. Um, no. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> but yeah, so I come from a single family, but not single family. So okay. my dad passed away when I was younger. Wow. My mom remarried. Okay. Um, so college was pushed on me. Wow. So I went to a small liberal arts school and it cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I got my undergrad and my in my MBA. Okay. It cost me about $150,000. $150, and um it's expensive. That's an yeah. expensive piece of paper. So yeah. up until then, you know, it's just been grinding, trying to minimize that debt. Mm -hmm. uh, we minimize it by sixty thousand, no, eighty thousand dollars. Wow. So we're still on the grind. And okay. my, my message, my platform is all about providing education yeah. to our people yeah. to empower them to make the moves financially. And when you say our people to people listening, when you what do you mean by that? Black folk. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay then. <laughs> Yay! No, I just had to make sure, but you love all people. Oh. You're just saying like you want to help specifically get back to that minority, exactly. low income community where uh, privileges and education is not really in that area. Exactly. And I think that's important. Pass the beat. Man, listen, first of all, I'm at the table. Let's, let's You are. I'm at the table. Yes, you are. So I'm grateful, man. I'm thankful. And uh I've been I've been seeing this online. Now I get to be yes. here for myself. You yes, know what I'm you but, was my uh, first guest on uh, Zoom. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. yes, and it did incredibly well. I think it's about quarter of a million. It is views at the moment. So he, thank he, everybody for tuning in. That, <laughs> that, that, that was that was a plug for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody out there. Thank you so much. Oh, oh YouTube watching. So, <laughs> so uh, similar story. Uh, grew up in the inner city of Boston. Okay. Uh, single mom, absent father. My father was addicted to drugs, and oh, uh, so grew up, man, on welfare, food yeah. stamps, government assistance. My mom trying to uh, take care of three boys on her own, uh, but she always sent me to church. And yeah. I had a grandfather. My grandfather was very militant about making sure uh, that not only we lived a right life, but that we were living the bullock life. And yeah, so yeah. he'd say stuff to me like, this is what a bullock does, and wow. this is who a bullock is. And 
he'd make me sing and he'd make me preach and wow. make me do all these different things. And so, uh, man, uh, for me uh, today, uh, I didn't become a, stati- a statistic. Mm. Uh, I was able to come out of the community that I was in. The funny thing about it is that my mom was a lunch mother uh, trying to do her best to get these three boys through. Today, my mother is a master. She has a master's degree. Uh, she's a teacher at the school. She used to be a lunch mother at. Oh, wow. She's a top That's teacher amazing. there in that school. Wow. And uh, today, you know, I got married when I was 24. Yeah. Uh, I have a six-year-old now and a four-year-old. Yes. And uh, I'm able to give to them the life that I didn't have. Man. Uh, the father that I always wanted, I got. I get to be now every single day. So my platform is really helping millennials and helping people build legacy. Uh, even though you've never seen it done before, it doesn't mean it can't be done. Come on. And so I really believe that it's important for us to recognize that we may not have gotten the best start, but we can have a better finish. And so I'm excited about uh, what I'm doing and what I'm able to uh, cause other people to do in their lives. You can tell he a pastor, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I, mean, I, I gave you 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> they took 30 seconds. You know what? You know what I'm saying? That's how pastors do it. Hey, man, I just want to thank you for allowing me to come on your show, to your church, to the pastor of this house, man of God. Yes. <laughs> Give me a favor. Turn, turn a whole right minute and a half. Turn to, the book, turn to the book of Brian right now, please. Chapter three. Oh, Jesus, man. Took the whole two minutes, bro. We only got 28 minutes. Man, I felt like Come 30 on, seconds, man. That's like 30 <laughs> seconds, man. I'm sorry. I felt like 30 seconds. Oh, man. Lord Jesus. All right, so all of us at the table can relate to where we don't really come from wealth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't come from uh, a lot of things. Mm-hmm. We come from a very humble um, a very strong family because all of our family members, all of our mothers and fathers taught us what we needed to know to survive right. and to get to where we are today. Uh, but our parents couldn't give us a million dollars to be successful. They couldn't pay for our schools to go off to our dream schools. Um, our, our our fathers, some of them were absent. Um, I have two fathers, mm. uh, which was never hard, but it was confusing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, wait, this is confusing. Like, wait, what's going on? Uh, so... When we think about generational legacy, all right, what does that mean to you when you think about, you know, your kids and the one that you have coming soon? Uh, What are you and your husband processing? What does the future look like for them when they are having kids, when you're a grandma, when you're a grandfather? Like, or does legacy include the kids? What's (laughs) y'all's definition of legacy? Mm. And I want to ask this question because I believe Millennials, we do not focus on the future. We only focus on right now. Well, my definition of legacy is a legacy is something that's passed down. Mm-hmm. It okay. is your mark on the earth. It is your contribution to the world. Yeah. Uh, it is literally you, your impact, your imprint. Yeah. And for me, uh, when I think of legacy, I'm saying, yeah, what am I passing down to someone? Yeah. And I think for me, uh, when I look at what my dad did not pass down, I think sometimes when we think about generational legacy, we tend to focus on the negative, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, my dad had an addiction, so now I got an addiction, mm-hmm. or my mom dropped out of school, so now I dropped out of school. And I think that if if a generational legacy can happen in the negative, it can also happen in the positive. Right, True. My dad bought a house, I bought a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My great my my great grandfather built a business. My grandfather built a business, my dad built a business. And so for me, I'm saying, okay, what can I begin? that mm. the next generation will continue. Mm. What can mm. I start doing now? Mm. Instead of looking at life as a major sprint, let me yeah. just get through it, live my best life now. Mm. Yeah. What if I looked at life as a marathon or even better, a relay race yes. mm. that I'm really here to start something that's going to be continued. Mm. And I think when you have that mentality, the truth be told, you actually live a better a, li- a better life and a yeah. more quality life. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. And to kind of piggy off, just piggyback off of that. I've been in this space of abundance. Yeah. Um, and to your point, I like what you talk about the relay way, race. It's not really about, maybe sometimes we probably won't even see that mm. when it fl- comes to fruition. If I can set something up now for my daughter yeah. to take the baton yeah. and run with it, yeah. and it doesn't really have to be monetarily. Yeah. It can be that mind state. And I like what you said, what your granddad said. This is what we do. Yeah. Having those family values, having that, that mind state that we're going we're gonna to give, we're going to impact our community, yeah. and we're going to make money while we're doing it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um, so, and, it's, and money's not a bad thing. And I think, I, I don't Ooh. know if that's one of the topics. Um, I don't, don't want to jump too far. Ooh. Money's not a bad thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But it's a resource. And and that's what I'm thinking about abundance, man. Like, we have to think in abundance. If you think in abundance, you act in abundance. Absolutely. So So I'm I'm all about that, that relay race. I love it. That's good. 
My husband and I kind of have a nerdy approach to it. So. <laughs> Let's go. Bring it. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> we, we've actually sat down and kind of outlined what we want our lives to look like and what we want to pass on to our kids. So Ooh. we've outlined various areas, finance, emotions, you know, emotional health, health in general, fitness, and like what are the areas of our life that we're weak in and how can we improve? That's and so, so good. We'll do like fasts. We'll do challenges where we'll do like five months of implementing a certain habit to try mm. to build it into ourselves because wow. we really want to lead by example. We don't yeah. want to just tell our kids like, you should do this. This is the person you should be. This is the ideal. Like we want to show them how we do it and it yeah. to be something that's natural. So, you know, we struggled at, during college. We gained the fit freshman 15, freshman 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know how to eat well. Wow. Um, but now eating healthy is part of our lifestyle. Yeah. Hopefully our kids, they're not going to get to college and be like, I've never eaten healthy. I don't know how to yeah. treat my body well. It's just something they've always done their whole lives because we did it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional health, you know, we've dealt with our emotional battles, our insecurities, and had to, you know, try to navigate all that. I hope that we can instill in them, you know, the right tools to process their emotions healthy and effectively, you know, so that it's not something that they're battling the ways we've had to throughout our 20s. You know, we just yeah. want to instill it in them naturally. But first, we got to figure it out for ourselves. Right. And I love how you called out legacy is not just about the financial side of things, but it's mm -hmm. also about the mental health side of things. It's about, hey, here are some some things I really want you to pick up that goes down to like what your grandfather said. This is the Bullock way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be the Ellis way of doing things, and this is going to be the Frugal's way of doing things, and it's going to be the O'Neill's way of doing things, but mm -hmm. it starts with us at the table. I agree. And I love it. It's so important because I think when you look at <clears throat> statistics, yeah. majority of uh, wealthy people lose their wealth within that second generation. Mm. That's so and true. And then mm. uh, the, that next generation after is they lose even more. Mm. Right. And so you're looking at 80% of wealthy families will lose it in that second generation. And I think it was like 80 to 90% will lose it in that third generation. Yeah. Well, what happened? We passed down money, but we didn't pass down the mindset. Come on, man. Mm. And so That's true. That's the real. reason why you're lo we're losing the money that we're accumulating yes. is because I didn't tell you the bullock way. I didn't, I didn't create the habits yes. uh, that you're going to be able to continue for the rest of your life. So that's the reason why I think this conversation is so important. We're not, we're, we're not going to negate money. We right. want our money. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Go make some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make it very clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be rich. No, yeah. I, want, I want my kids to have their money. <laughs> but there's, the mindset's got to come with the money. And I right. think that's where we really start digging into legacy talk. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go back uh, to the beginning of all of our journeys. Mm -hmm. um, all of us have faced some obstacles. Mm -hmm. Single um, single parent, uh, growing up in the inner city in, in a not uh, wealthy area, uh, lost your father. Mm -hmm. How did we overcome some of these obstacles that was put before us? I mean, Christina, I want to start with you. Your mama said, listen, you can go to college, but I can't give you nothing. Right. <laughs> I mean, I can't help you at all. Yeah. That is a huge obstacle. At what age did your mom tell you that? It was my freshman year of high school. Freshman year of high school? Yeah. She set the wow. ground. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she, that's what wow. I was like. Your mama hit a little you. Bit. Oh, I, you just graduated from middle school. I'm a, yeah, I'm a teenager now. Right. Here you go. Right. Hey, 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 you Come right. <laughs> you the young woman now. Let me hit you with this right here. <laughs> I can't pay for school. Like, <laughs> what was your response and what made you, because I'm like, I'm thinking if I'm in your shoes and my parents told me I can't pay for college. Mm. So if you want to go, you got to go. I would have been tripping and honestly, I would have probably never went. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like, real. how did you, what was your thought process then? Yeah. And then how did you overcome it? Yeah. Well, at first I was shocked. I was like, why are you telling me this? I'm a freshman in high school. What can I do about it? Right. But. At the same time, I knew that she was just trying to help. Something mm. deep inside of me knew that. You know, my dad passed away when I was seven after a battle with brain cancer. And even though my mom, she's super driven and she did the best she could to support us, um, I knew that wasn't yeah. realistic. Paying $50,000, $70,000 a year for college wasn't yeah. realistic. So, yeah. um, you know, thankfully it motivated me and inspired me to move forward. My mom is an immigrant, and she actually came to the United States on a scholarship from mm. Venezuela. Wow. wow. Yeah, so she wow. has such a, like, can-do attitude. She is Fierce. Like yeah, yeah, she yeah. is a very, very strong woman. So yeah. um, that definitely rubbed off on me. It mm -hmm. kind of motivated me. And I think she kind of had the attitude of like, if I can do it, if I can come from the ghetto of Caracas, Venezuela, yeah, yeah. and come to the United States and get college paid for, yeah. you have been given so much opportunity, figure it out. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> like, so true. Wow. So yeah. what did you do to do that? I mean, you raised a half a million dollars. <laughs> I, I got to ask, like <laughs> on this show, what the heck? 
did you do? Because, you know, I travel around and I hear this all the time from especially people in the inner city. I can't do it. Like, I, I can't raise money. I'm not going to be able to go to school. I have to take out student loans. I'm going to mm. have to take out this stuff so I can be successful. How, what were some of the secrets? And then at the end, we're going to give away some some tools that you're doing and that you're using to help young people do this. But what was that umph over? Yeah, well, we just dove into research. So I wanted to know what people were doing to win scholarships. I figured if somebody else can do it, then why can't I do it? Yeah. And so I started studying, you know, alumni from my high school who'd won scholarships. What were they doing to be successful? I started yeah. reading every book I could find, every magazine, watching every video I could find on the topic and just yeah. trying to figure out, you know, what are these people doing to make it? So thankfully, my mom told me freshman year because it gave me four years to build my resume yes. and to, yes. you know, work on my grades and try to take the right classes and just study how to create an amazing application. So yeah. I put a lot of effort into that. And then come senior year, I studied, you know, what, what are scholarship judges looking for? How yeah. do you write your strong essays? How do you craft applications that yeah. stand out from the crowd? And then I just poured into it. I treated it like a part-time job. Yeah. I just, you know, 20 hours a week went to the library. Thankfully, my mom is super supportive and she would sit with me and we would just go, go. you know, yeah. go for it. And just applied, 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 and yeah. thankfully it led to a ton of money ton. and <laughs> paid off. But that's the thing is it's like it, it's better pay when you break down the number of hours that I spent working on it, the mm. research and all of that. It's like it's still better pay than almost any part-time job you Absolutely. could possibly find in high Absolutely. school. So even though it's a big investment up front, mm -hmm. um, it can have massive rewards. And yeah. the thing is, is it's like, I wasn't a star athlete. I don't, I wasn't Come in a gifted yeah. program. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I had unusual talent, but mm. I was just very strategic. Even the activities that I picked and the different ways that I competed, the different awards that I won, I was just very, very strategic in how I did it and mm. created opportunities for myself that would stand out from the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost goes bad too. Like, you probably weren't the smartest one but you were the smartest one. Mm. And like you were like, okay, this is the path that I want to go. Okay, how do I get there? What are the things I need to do to get there? And and I, I, I appreciate that because I tell young people all the time, not young people, all the people, like just pick your path and study that path mm, and make sure no one can outwork you mm. in that path. And so that's what worked out for you. And I, and I love that because... You know, when I really think about this, it's like you're talking about the huge rewards on the opposite end. You know, you have no student loan debt. Mm. You graduated from a school that you would have graduated with at least $200,000 in student loan debt minimum mm -hmm. from right. Vandy and with your master's. I'm like, yeah, you should be drowning in debt right now. <laughs> but because of the hard work you put in in your youth years and not saying, you know what, I'm just going to just suck it all up. I'm in the inner city. I'm just going to allow that to be the excuse to why I'm not successful. Uh, you said, no, I'm, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I'm going to use that as fuel. Mm -hmm. Right. And today you're traveling mm -hmm. world, best-selling book, killing it in the space. And because of that, now you and your husband can focus on building wealth for your kids. Yes. Come on, Thank come, God. Come, come on. Wow, come on now. That's good. Where, wow. where you at, brother? Like, what were some of the obstacles you had to get over, especially coming from Cleveland? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like We can talk about that later. <laughs> we can talk about that Cleveland. later. Um, <laughs> as you said, I lost my I lost my dad at an early age. Yeah. And, you know, for a good amount of period, which is me and my mom, then she remarried. Yeah. But it was just that my mother did not let up. Wow. I could have easily went that other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she was on my butt. Yeah. You know, she would get into me. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, trust me, I know. And um, that was that built me. At yeah. that time, I didn't know what was going on. Right. I was six, you know. I'm like, why is my mom so strong on me? Yeah. So now that I see that, and I appreciate that, I've told her, I said, I appreciate you being hard on me. Yeah. Kind of with, you, with your mom. Yeah. Like, that tough love. Yeah, yeah. It, trust me. It works. It's real. It's mm -hmm. real. Did your mom ever smack you? Oh, plenty of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't promote violence. Yeah, but. I feel We don't promote violence, but, you know, I don't, I don't got smacked a couple yeah, times yeah. with my mama. Yeah, I love you, mama. Yeah. But I appreciate that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And that's what fuels me now. To your point, I'm not the smartest person, but I will work. I will outwork, mm -hmm. you know, so-called the competition. Mm -hmm. But I'm in competition with myself. Come on, man. So if I want to achieve something, I can make it happen. Or if I don't know it, I will yeah. partner with someone that knows it better than me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when it comes financially, it's just having that self-accountability to make it happen yeah. by, many, by any means necessary. 
So, Brian, I want to ask you, because you grew up in a single-parent household. Your mm -hmm. father was absent in your life. Um, how did that experience shape you and make you into the man you are today? Because, I mean, you know, you're married to my sister, Karen. Love her. Um, I have nieces and nephews uh, from you. And it's like I see how you are very involved in their life. But the man you are today, let's just be real, we don't see a lot of— specifically in the minority community, we don't see a lot of strong men mm -hmm. come out in the minority community from single-family households, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And it's not a knock on, on mothers who are raising. I believe these, these mothers are doing a great job right. and the best job that they possibly can. But I think the, the character of men um, in our community are lacking mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. of the absence of their fathers. 100%. How are you the man you are today with your father not being present? Yeah, it's a difficult thing to answer. It's yeah. a difficult question to answer only because I want to be more upset than I am. Ooh. But I would be ignoring the blessings that came into my life yeah. as a result of his absence. Mm. So it's a, it's a tough thing. That's tough. Um, to be honest, when I was younger, my mom, it's, it's almost like when I, my mom was a miracle worker, okay? Yeah. yeah. We were poor. Yeah, okay, yeah. when I was growing up. Okay. I didn't know I was poor at the time. That's real. I didn't know. We were until I got older and I looked back and I said, Mom, we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing to us? That was why was you putting Bruh, some ham on the like that? that spent, was, bro, I had hamburger help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every helper. day. Remember that? Bro, I mean, today I can't do it. I thought it was great. Thought, Come on. And I'm sitting there saying, wait, no, no, we weren't supposed to be in that line. That's not we weren't supposed to get food from there. Yeah, I thought I thought people dropping off <laughs> Christmas presents, you know. Yeah. What was that thing, Secret Santa? I thought, oh, that, was, yeah. I thought that was, you know, uh, people love us in the uh, city. I didn't know this was everybody loves us. Governmental assistance. <laughs> I didn't know that this was help. I didn't know. So wait, you got a <laughs> Secret Santa? Oh yeah, man. They Bro. dropped off presents every Christmas. And so for me, it's the same thing with with dad, with my dad. Yeah. I didn't know that my father was missing. Until I got older, I became an adult, and I realized, wait a minute, yeah. I'm missing some 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 things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some dots weren't connecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, it was like, oh, my dad's not here. You know, me yeah. visit. We would visit my dad in a wow. drug rehab wow. almost every weekend. Wow. Mm -hmm. We'd drive and go see him, and he he. I spent majority of my childhood visiting my father. Okay. At a drug drug rehab, wow. it was the most normal thing in the world to me. Mm. Gotcha. And even all the other other people that he was in there with, mm. they were like uncle so and so and uncle so and so. Wow. I didn't know that all these men were struggling with an addiction, and that <laughs> they were all trying to recover at the same time. Yeah. My mom did a great job at at protecting us. Uh, and not making us feel like we weren't normal. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, she wanted us to feel like we were normal, that we were regular. But I'll say this. When I look back over my life, had my dad been there, mm -hmm. I probably would not have turned out the way that I did. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if God was protecting me. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if the person, sometimes you have to be careful when you get upset about the people who are missing from your life. Maybe they're missing for a reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe their presence will do more harm mm -hmm. than their absence. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. sometimes their absence makes room for God to bring new people in. Yeah. I have many fathers. Yeah. Uh, my my biological dad wasn't there for me, yeah. but I've had fathers from school. I have fathers in the church. I have yeah. fathers in the, the, the after school program. I, yeah. God brought men into my life who he would not have brought had my dad been taking up that space. Yeah. And there were things that I was not introduced to because of my dad. So even though there is a void and I feel it, even when I'm with my kids, I'm doing stuff with my kids that my dad, I, don't, I taught my kids how to ride a bike. My mm. dad never never, ever taught me how to ride a bike. Yeah. I run with my kids. I used to run after my dad because mm. he would steal my mother's purse. Wow. And I used to run after with my kids. And I'm saying, That's wait, deep. I used to run after my dad and now I'm running with, with my kids. kids. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I'm, I'm careful and I think everybody who's listening right now and you're going through this and you're mm. feeling this and you're upset about who's not there, sometimes you have to look at who is there mm. and realize mm. that that person who is there is strategically positioned to help get you to the next level. When we think about the future, mm -hmm. right, when y'all sit down and think about where you are, are today, when did it shift for you all to say, you know what, or maybe there wasn't a shift. It's not like you was there in high school, but it's like for us, when did our minds shift to start thinking about, okay, future, um, wealth, um, debt freedom, um, f just peace, joy, mm -hmm. rather than 
I want the Louis, Gucci. I want to go here. I want to drive this car. I want to be in this house <laughs> right now. Forget investing in my 401k. Don't open a Roth IRA because I can take that money and go buy this and look good. Look impressive today, but not be impactful for tomorrow. Like when did that shift for us? At the I can table? tell you the exact date happened. Oh, the, wow. You know the exact date, like to the date. I know exactly when it happened. When it happened. The day my wife said, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I said, I said. That's a good one. <laughs> let me see, let me see, let me see. <laughs> that day was the happiest and scariest day of my life. Why? And it? that day I knew, that was literally like everything's changing now. That's wow. Real. And that was the day. It wasn't that I wasn't taking life seriously. I had always taken life seriously. Yeah, yeah. But that day my mindset changed. Wow. I was, it took me. Years to graduate from college. I had not graduated from college. Okay. And I was I was just fumbling through college, not really doing much. Mm. When my wife told me she was pregnant, mm. I said to myself, I'm not going to let my daughter, when my daughter's born, I want her to see me walk walk and get my degree. That's mm. real. I took, I got my degree. Wow. What was taking me years to finish. Yeah. And then in the nine months, it was a nine to 10 month period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to an accelerated school. Wow. Springfield College in Massachusetts. <laughs> and I got my degree, and my daughter was born in September. Uh -huh. And in December, I walked, and she watched me walk wow. through my That's career. amazing. So it, was, it just changed everything. Changed everything. I would say mine started a little earlier than when my daughter was born. So mm -hmm. I remember reading The Total Money Makeover. Wow. Uh, it was like Christmas 2016-ish. And I said, it's time to go. Because mm -hmm. at that time, I had about maybe... $160,000 of student loan debt. Mm. And I said, no, it's time to go. Mm. It's time to make something happen. So from there, mind you, I'm this corporate guy. I got my MBA mm -hmm. and I got all this debt. Mm -hmm. Making good money mm -hmm. to be in my mid-20s. But I had to, you know, swallow my pride. I got yeah. a job at Subway. Oh. So I was flipping sandwiches after I would leave my corporate role and go down the street, put my uniform on. Bruh. I'm flipping sandwiches. And that was probably the most humbling experience ever. Wow. Because it didn't matter what, what was on paper about Frugal Freddy. Right, right, right. It was about, let's get rid of this debt. Wow. And I didn't let my ego get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I got an MBA. I shouldn't be working at Subway. No, that MBA is making you work at Subway. Ooh, mm, uh, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh. So, <laughs> so, so through that, you know, it's just taking the, the mentality of like, I got to make this happen for my family. And at that time, I wasn't married. I was dating my wife. We didn't have kids. So yeah. I'm like, I don't want to give this to my kids. Mm. I wanted mm. it to be gone way mm. before they even turned five. Mm. So I've worked at Subway, worked at Target. I deliver food. I've sold stuff on the street corner, like yeah, yeah. jump from our home. Yeah. So it was just by any means necessary, I'm getting rid of this debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say at one point, we went to full throttle. Yeah. And we had to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because life's more important than some debt. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, the debt will be gone. Yeah. So, yeah, I just had to humble myself. And after reading that book, I read the book over a weekend. Yeah, yeah. I said, no, it's, it's, it's go time. It's go time. It's go time. Time. So, so, should I go to the job of Subway, man? Should I? Should I, I, mean, I gotta, <laughs> bro, make this happen. I mean, listen, yeah, man, gotta make listen, it happen. Listen, I have no problem with that, man. I, one of the key things for me when I got here is I had to swallow my pride, too. I'm telling people, hey, do anything you have to do to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. And and so when I got here, I was I was debt-free. When I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. Debt-free. I'm on the stage, I'm traveling the world, and I'm telling people, hey, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable to really reach your goals. And so God said, well, what have you done uncomfortable recently? Ooh. And I was like, well, I ain't got to, I'm good. <laughs> he was like, no, but how are you going to tell people to really get uncomfortable? You have to get uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, shoot. I'm making, I'll say it, I'm making six figures, mm -hmm. and I go drive for Uber. Mm. The very first person I picks up recognizes who mm. I am. That's real. Mm. Like Anthony, I thought you were dead free. I was like, <laughs> I am. I'm like, how, well, how do I explain this? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how do I? You know, he's like, right? Does, does Dave know you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, I'm like, you know. And I told him the truth. I was like, man, I, I'm good. I said, but I, I teach people that. To get to where you want to go, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable because nothing extraordinary happens with inside of our comfort zone. That's real. And so I had to remind myself, what does it feel like to be uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. And for literally a whole month, 
Um, I drove for Uber. I would leave this office, mm-hmm. get in my car, go vacuum out the car, fill it up with gas, and go pick people up wow. and drive them around in Uber. And and a few people recognized me, but just to hear the stories mm-hmm. and hear people's wow. life, and I was able to actually minister to people. Mm-hmm. And people were like, man, this Uber driver just dropped some knowledge on me. What? It, what you're different. You're a different kind of Uber driver. <laughs> but you know, that was a season of me being uncomfortable. But I've been there. I was homeless. I was sleeping in the back of my car. But I haven't been there Mm -hmm. and really been that uncomfortable. And so God was like, I need you to remember that. Mm -hmm. So when you get on the stage, you know, honestly, to this day, where to pull from. Mm -hmm. Um, Christina, you've been on that grind mode, you know, since you were young. But I'm curious to know, though, you know, what experiences really shaped you and your husband today Mm -hmm. uh, for y'all's future? Well, one of the the things about my childhood that I think was unique that kind of got me motivated really early was the fact that my mom did immigrate from Venezuela, and we went we went to Venezuela about a month or two every year my entire childhood. Wow. So even though we were low income, we were technically in poverty. Similar story where it's yeah. like, we didn't even know we were in poverty really because <laughs> yeah. like my mom was such a hustler and good at like managing the budget. But it's like, we saw a completely different world for an extensive period of time every year. So it's like even the poorest people in America are richer than, than the poorest people over there. Than, a, than even some of the wealthy people over there. Like their wow. lifestyle That's real. is so much better wow. than even people who have money in wow. Venezuela. So it's like that just instilled so much gratitude for what we what we do have. You know, we my my abuela didn't have air conditioning, you know. Yeah. She didn't have we still took like uh showers out of the, like the rain water and like, we boil serious? it on the stove and do like bucket showers. Like wow. that was our childhood. That was something that we saw all the time. So it's like we realized, and my mom was very intentional about making sure we realized that we were very privileged just yeah. to be in an America and to yeah. have any income and to have carpet on the floor and to yes. not have bugs running around and, yeah. and all these different things. It's just like we are incredibly fortunate. And so that sense of gratitude, that wow. sense of like we have so much, what am I going to do with what I've been given mm-hmm. um, was instilled very young. And mm-hmm. like I said, my mom is a very strong personality, strong woman. And so she has always pushed us to be like, okay, like I set you up to yeah. get this far. Like, yeah. look at where I came from. Where are you going now? Like, mm. what are you going to do with what I've set up for you? And so that's even something with with my son, with our future children. It's like, how do I instill that gratitude and that sense of um, just knowledge of like what they have moving forward? That's something generationally that I'm very passionate about figuring out. It's like, how do I fight entitlement that's so prevalent in mm. a lot of um, my generation right now? How do yeah. I help them realize how amazing yeah. their life is and just help them move forward from a place of being really grateful? I think all of us are like, yo, we didn't have this at a young age, and we want to give our kids something different to look forward to. Um, one of the things I've learned— from and tell me if y'all agree with this or not. I know you do because we, we've agreed to do this together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, but one of the things I've learned, honestly, coming from an all black community to a white community, that the I've seen more in our white community. Not saying this doesn't happen in a minority community. I'm just saying I've, I, I see it more in this community that they really focus on setting their kids up to be financially ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brian, myself, and two other of my best friends, one's an NFL player, we've all agreed that by the time our kids get married, we would either cut them a check for six figures minimum or buy their first house. Mm. That's amazing. That's, That's nice. minimum. So whatever whatever we are in life, it's either going to be $100,000, here you go, God bless you, to go towards starting your life, or when they get married, we purchase their first house. And for me, that is huge to me. I remember calling Brian saying, yo, I, I just, I've been around a lot of white people. And, and they they buying their kids houses, bro. They getting married in their packages. Like, when you get married, we will purchase your, and I'm like, how come we can't do that? Right, mm. right, right. Because, see, a lot of us uh, uh, feel as if we started l- behind. We started on the back of the line. There's right. this video out where you see, you know, this guy was asking a whole bunch of questions with blacks and whites in there. And he said, if you can answer yes, step ahead. If you grew up in a, a duo home with both your parents, if you have a car at the age of 16, if you have this. And when you look at it, when he was done answering the questions, it was all white people but one black person in that group. And all the black people were in the very back. Mm-hmm. 
And I said, my son will be in the front of that line. Mm -hmm. My daughter will be in the front of that line. Should we, we, when we think about the minority culture, um, and not just minority culture, because you're actually raising multiracial kids, right? I love it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, shouldn't we be able to have our kids have a head start more than what we have? And what does that look like for you all? When you think about mm -hmm. legacy at, in our 30s, because all of us are in our 30s here, what does that look like for you all? Like for me, it's, it's that. My goal is right now, I'm tracking to do the six figures, that's easy, but the uh, buying a house, that's the goal. Like that's the God goal. Like God, I want to do that by the time they get married. And then also too, man, I want to create experiences, you know, for my kids. We it's didn't really go to Disney World. We didn't go to Disneyland. I don't know what it, I never went outside the country with my kids. Like I want to take my kids to Israel. Like, hey, hey son, yeah. do, this is where Jesus walked. Open up your Bible. Let me let me turn this into 3D. This is where that is. I don't. I can't say I had those experiences with my mom and dad because mm -hmm. they worked hard. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that. We were living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for you all? To kind of piggyback off of that, I'm all about experiences. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, for for our community, um, you know, we we've had some obstacles throughout yeah. you know this country's history. Yeah. Um, but I think it's one of those things that goes back to our relationship with money. Yeah, yeah. And having that knowledge. And, and like I said, I have my MBA. Yeah. But I've learned so much more outside of that. Come on, man. Um, and I think self-education is important. Yeah. And that's why I push that to people. Yeah. Um, educate yourself first. Yeah. You know, formal education is cool, but you learn more and you, you make more by mm -hmm. learning on yourself and through so-called mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what it looks like for me, to your point, is providing those experiences to my to my daughter. Yeah. I, one of one of my godly goals is to live internationally. Come on, man. Come on. Um, Come on, man. And I like what yeah. you said. So I, wow. I, I had experience. I went to South Africa in my graduate um, career. We're very privileged here in America. Wow, bro, I want to go so bad and just so, to experience that. So I went to multiple parts. And... Our media doesn't do it any justice. Mm. I went to Cape Town. That looks like Miami, Florida. Mm. You would never mm. know that based on our media. So I had to experience that, like you said, in 3D. Mm. Mm. So I want to give that experience to mm. my kids. Mm. Like, make it, everyone's normal is different. Mm. And I know you kind of talked about that. Yeah. Like, I want our kids normal to be, we travel overseas. Come and, on, And man. not feel guilty about that. Come on. Yeah. And that talks yeah. about abundance. Yes. Um, so if we can live in Europe for half a year, but it's on me and my wife to make that happen financially through different means. Mm -hmm. First, it's becoming debt-free, so mm -hmm. we don't have that burden. But we need an accelerant to accelerate that income. Um, so I won't preach anymore. I'm getting my pastor on oh, right you now. You preaching? <laughs> Bro, you, you are. Bro, you, I'm going to tell you that right now. But it's just you one of those preaching. summers and you got that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Come on. Let's make yeah. it happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> and, um, and that's the one of the things, man, like, it's not about money for me. Yes. It's really about time and yes. experiences. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. money's going to make it happen. Come on. Money's going to make that happen. Come yeah. on. So I'm not going to let money be my my master, but it's going to be a resource. Come so, mm -hmm. all right, I'm, I'm going to stop. Woo! I'm going to stop. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Don't yeah. put that on the table. Well, I'm going to give this show. Is there organ or something? I don't know. Hey, <laughs> <can we? laughs> let's let's I'm, do this. I'm, I'm going to give him an offering. <laughs> <laughs> I received that. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that, you know, for me, I recognize that I'm raising two world changers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my wife is from El Salvador. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm African American. So my kids are mixed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this, from the schools they go to, they are just, they're, they're different. They yeah. stand out. Um, I think what my grandfather gave me was identity. Mm. And Martin Luther King Jr. said this about his professors at Morehouse. Yeah. Uh, he said, they place a crown on our head so large that we would spend the rest of our lives trying to fit into. Wow. And mm. I'm trying to put a crown on my kids' head so large that they would spend the rest of their lives trying on, to man. fit their heads into. Come on, man. And Ooh. so I think that you do that by by identity. Yeah. Uh, my 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 daughter's six. My son is four. Every day we have something called the Big Five, the mm. Bullock Big Five. Mm. I do this with them every single day, mm. whether I'm at home or I'm on the road, mm -hmm. uh, where I say, what's the Bullock Big Five? They'll tell you the Bullock Big Five. Number one, love God. Mm. God is first. They'll hold up their number one. Number yeah. two, inspire people. We yeah. lift people up. Number yeah. three, honor family. Number four, dream big. I say, what's a small dream? And they, they say this, and I say, what is that? And they say, oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> 
said, no, daddy. No, I said, what? what how do we dream? And they said, oh, daddy, we, we're dreaming. <laughs> you got to see. I gotta, I'm going to record it one yeah, day. Yeah, record it one day, man. I asked, what does small dream look like? They say, oh, that's little. That's nothing. <laughs> and then number five is, is build legacy. That's and it. so they're saying it every single day. Yeah. And all these different things, I'm trying to establish identity because mm. part of the reason why uh, the black community ends up uh, in gang life. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why mm -hmm. we end up uh, uh, committing crimes. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why we end up uh, uh, drugs and all those different things is because those no one told us who we are. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't know who you are, it's easy to take on uh, an, an image uh, that's portrayed in a rap song or yes. portrayed in a movie or yes. portrayed by just the, the people that you see in your surroundings. So yes. for me, I'm trying to show a different picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to show a different movie. I'm trying yeah. to give a different identity so that uh, they'll live up to uh, who I declare them to be yeah. and not who society says they should be. I love it. That's deep. I man. love it. I love it. You're last, but you're not the last. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Man, this, this question challenges me in, in a good way mm -hmm. um, because, yes, I do want to leave my children set up for success financially, mm -hmm. you know, saving in a 529. Hopefully mm -hmm. we can pay cash for college. But at the same time, I don't want them to know that they have a bank account ready for college. Ooh. Like, I don't want them to expect or feel mm -hmm. entitled to that money. I Come want on. them to—they should still win scholarships if yes. they can. Like, why, yes. why should they not fight for that? And then yeah. that money can go to something else. You yeah. know, I feel like— some of the greatest gifts I have in my life were born from the challenges that I've been through and mm. some of the reasons I'm so driven and I'm passionate about what I do. It's because of the obstacles I went through. So it's like, how do you find that balance between not wanting your children to have to fight the way that you did, mm -hmm. but at the same time, not taking away the benefits of the fight? Yeah. Like, how do you instill that's that hard. fighter attitude in them? Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, my son's two, and I have one on the way, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have time to figure it out. <laughs> start them early. Start them early. <laughs> right. start them. Right. Start them. We talk about it hey. all the time. <laughs> as soon as they start talking, we can't afford to pay for that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, well, it's, uh, it's funny. Uh, we were at Target not long ago, and my son was like, I want that truck. And I told him he can have a Matchbox car, like the $2 car. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, buddy, like, we're not spending that amount of money today. And, wow. Um, you know, when we went to check out, I was like, okay, like, we're going to use our debit card. This is what we have. And it's funny because the next week he was like, Dad, he was like, Daddy, I need uh, the keys. And he was like, what are you going to do with the keys? And he's like, I'm gonna, I need some money so I can go to Cadoba. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, at least he's like starting to process the money concept. <laughs> Absolutely. That is hilarious, man. Um, I want to end with this because, I mean, if we have more time, man, we could, we can go. Uh, we could just, we could just go. Um, but... What do you think is one thing that's preventing us from accomplishing success and really building wealth and true legacy for the future? And, and when I say legacy, let's just take our kids out of the picture. Like, what's preventing us from accomplishing our goals? What's preventing the millennial generation specifically, mm -hmm. that 20-something, 30-something? And I know they're not in millennials, but like even like the younger 40s. What's preventing us from being and accomplishing true success in areas of our finances, in areas of going to school, in areas of building a legacy? What is that thing we think about the young people? I'll go back to the, the education piece. Yeah. Um, for me personally, it's really trying to learn as much as possible in a reasonable amount of time to set myself up financially. Yeah. If it's learning more about stocks, if it's learning more about different debt reduction methods, yeah. if it's learning about my relationship with money, how do I feel about money? That's good. You know what I mean? I think that's at the at the at the beginning of everything. It's just how do you relate to money? Do you right. think it's a bad thing? Do you think it's a good thing? Right. And if it's a bad thing, let's work through that. So yeah. I would say to go back, it would be the education piece yeah. and trusting the process. Um, I think our generation, we live mm. in a popcorn society. Like yes. We want it right then mm. and now. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned in the, the different things that I'm working on outside of my nine to five, I got to have patience with it. Come on, man. You know what I mean? And I can't have it right then and now. So having that patience, educating ourselves, and doing it. Mm. You know, we all got all these ideas. And my, I talked to my mom. She got all these ideas. I said, do it, mom. Yeah. And she looked at me like, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's that push. But yeah. I get that from her. Absolutely. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm kind of like, kind of doing a tough love to her. Yeah. But like, do it. Do it. Do, do it, it afraid do and it. fail forward. Do Absolutely. It. Christina, you go next. You normally go last. <laughs> 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 well, you know what I'm going to say. What Student gonna say? loan debt. There you go. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, agree. It's so, it's, it's so hard. I talked to so many 
peers and, and students who are just graduating, I mean, they, they feel like they're starting their lives way, way behind. Yes. Um, you know, and it, it's hard to not have the poverty mindset at times, especially yeah. if you grew up with poverty. How do you break that when you're True. sitting there so burdened and constantly having to struggle with your budget and bills every day? So, yeah. I mean, it's a huge reason why I'm so passionate about what I do because yeah. it's like if I can help students get set up for success and get that further spot in the starting line yes. and be in a much stronger position, then yeah. that's a huge win. <sighs> Boy, that, that's huge. I'm telling you right now, student loan debt, oh my goodness. I wrote a book about it. Trust me, I agree with you. It is huge. B. Um, I think hey, you got 30 seconds past. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for me, it's, it's, it's living, people are living for their, their first name, not their last name. Mm. And I think that it's mm. an individual mindset yeah. of let me just take care of me. And mm. if I'm good, then we're good. Mm. And we have to start thinking, no, I have a last name. And my last name is my mom, my dad. It's, 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 it's my bloodline. It is, mm. It's me uh, saying, you know what, I have to live for something bigger than myself. And mm. I think if we can get people to start uh, living for something bigger than themselves, uh, then it will open up the opportunity for education and open up the opportunity to hear about the great resources. Come on, man. I mean, it really will just, just change a lot of our perspective. But yeah. we have to get away from the me mentality and get to the we mentality. Ooh. Man, listen. This is why I call this a table. Because we come to the table, we have the real, hard, relevant uh, conversations that I believe this younger generation needs to hear. Um, and I want to thank each and every single one of you all for coming to the table. I wish I had another hour. Seriously, I've said this probably going to the last five shows. It's just been great dialogue, but I just, I don't, I don't have an hour to talk, you know? I like y'all, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, ask hey, man, we can definitely do it again. Uh, real quickly, before we go, I want you all to tell people where can they find you, website, IG, any products you want to push, because I've looked at all y'all's products, so I, I would definitely endorse it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't let you push it. Uh, so, <laughs> ladies first. Christina, your stuff is important. I want you to tell them about your online thing that you have going right now. Thank you. Um, I have a new scholarship course that just came out, or it's yes. coming out soon. Yes. Um, and it's just a comprehensive course that walks students through the entire scholarship process. It helps you craft standout applications, find yeah. the best scholarships available, yeah. and figure out how to stand out from the crowd. And yeah. you can find that at collegeninja.com. College Ooh, Ninja. I like that. I like that. I love that. I love I it. Like All right, that. right. Well, let's, let's let the pastor go so this way Even though he, he, he won't talk. He yeah. won't talk so long because he knows he got to go to you. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go to you, but just know my offerings on the way. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, you can find me at brianmbullock.com, and uh, you can order the book Living for Legacy, yes. Creating a Blueprint for a Life That Matters. Uh, you can also get access to the Legacy e-course where some of the principles that you heard us talk about you'll be able to implement in your own life yeah. uh, by going to brianmbullock.com. Love it. All right, you can find me at frugal Yeah, and Frugal Freddy on all social media platforms. I got a couple cool shirts. Um, are you guys familiar with Living Single? Yeah, yeah. So I got a shirt that says Living Frugal. Oh, yay. Um, are you guys familiar with Blackish? The TV Absolutely. Show? Yes. I got a, show, uh, t- a t-shirt that says Frugalish. Come on. Frugalish. Um, so it's just a play on just, you know, 90s, like 90s type stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can go to my website, find that. A lot of free education on my social media platform. Yeah. So hit me up, DM me, and we can go from there. Yo, you guys, I'm going to drop all the information information in the description so make sure you all check that out y'all thank you so much thank you so much and to our all my listeners y'all thank you for rocking with me every single week you all are amazing and we'll see you on the next show peace out